that people know what they believe in. Uh, I read some statistics uh, as I showed you my paperwork here, and it says uh, every day in the United States by the Gideons and by Wycliffe and the American Bible Society, they give out 168,000 Bibles every day. Wow. 168,000 Bibles go out every day. And uh, it, it, I, the, the statistics go on to say that you can read the Bible if you choose to in 70 hours. In the Bible, there's, uh, it said in the, in the statistics, there's 1,260 promises and there's 6,468 6, commands. Gallup did a poll, and as they questioned the people, they said 92% of all the people they surveyed had a Bible in their home. And out of 92% of people that have a Bible in their home, only 37% read it once a week. Oh, wow. And out of that 37% that read it once a week, there's 50, they, they read it, they say, on a regular basis, which means 52 minutes a week, which breaks down to 7.5 minutes a day. You read more time in the newspaper. People read the back of cereal boxes. People read in their washroom the Reader's Digest. When the Bible sits idly on the shelf collecting dust from Sunday to Sunday when only 7.5 minutes a day by 37% of the population say that they actually read the Word of God. Only half the people surveyed could name one of the four Gospels. Of all the people surveyed, only 37% could name one, or excuse me, all four of the Gospels. 42% could not even quote five of the Ten Commandments. Not even half the people they surveyed could say five of the Ten Commandments. And 75% said the Bible teaches that God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Oh. Amen. I, I mean, I don't know uh, what you think on all these statistics, and I'm not a, a, a statistical man, and they're good to understand and, and look at, but there is a famine today for the Word of God, amen, yeah. in the land. Yeah. And he says uh, in verse 11, he says, Behold, watch out the days coming, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread and a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander. They shall wander. Why are we in such a mess? Why is our political system in a mess? Why is there so many young offenders going to school and carrying guns? And Gary told of how a, a, a gun on the TTC fell out uh, uh, on the ground there uh, on the bus uh, of, of the transportation system. And Jane and Finch, uh, there's somebody being killed all the time. Why? Why is there wandering around and people don't know where to go or where to turn because of this famine that's in the land? And from the, even from the, the sea to sea, he says, and from the north even to the east, they shall run and fro to and fro and seek the word of the Lord and shall not find it. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen. If ever we needed to get into the word of God, it's now. Amen. 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 I don't know if we're going through uh, uh, or how much uh, tribulation we're going through. The Bible just says, uh, in this world, you shall have tribulation. And I don't believe we're going through the great tribulation. But I know that Hitler tried to get rid of six million Jews and succeeded. And so the enemy knows uh, with that dress rehearsal that our brothers so bravely fought in and others uh, that were there uh, during the big one or the WW2 uh, uh, to, to stop this madman. And Hitler, that was just a dress rehearsal of what's wow. going to take place. Wow. Amen? Korea right now is on the verge of nuclear war. They're, yep. they're, they're spouting off their propaganda. They're shooting off missiles and giving the United States one hour of preparation time, as it were, giving them a heads up one hour before they actually do it. Right now, Israel is throffing at the bit to send missiles or planes in to destroy the nuclear reactors of Adimajan in Iran. We are now at the verge of the coming of the Lord, and we need the Word of God more than 
we ever needed it before. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that this, uh, these things in society that come our way, we need to have an anchor, and that anchor is the Word of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I want to read you some few passages. And here we see that uh, this is the book of the ages. Uh, in Psalm 119, verse 20, uh, 89, it says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Isaiah 40 and 8 says, The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Matthew says, For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot and one tittle shall not wise pass from the law, Till it be fulfilled. Jesus stood up in Matthew 24 and said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 25 says, But the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Hallelujah. The word of God endures. Amen. It is an anchor that we can hold on to. It is a shelter in the time of storm. It will give you strength. It will give you peace. It will calm you. It will help you. Hallelujah. Because the word of God, as you know and I know, it says in Hebrews, is quick and is powerful and sharper than any double-edged sword. It says here, than any two-edged sword piercing even to the divine asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord gives you comfort through his word. Amen. That's why I read to you tonight that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Jesus was there in the beginning and he is the word. Amen. The Bible says that the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. Amen. Hallelujah. You say God never speaks a to me, if God's not speaking to you, then you're not listening. Because here he is speaking to us every day. We can spend in his word. Hallelujah. Amen. The problem is, we don't have the famine of food, and we don't have the famine of water, and, and we're increased with goods, and, and we're like the Laodiceans. We're full fed, and we have need of nothing. And we have left our first love. Yeah. I was watching a documentary this week. It talked about a couple that were Jews in the Holocaust. How they wrote love letters to each other. And they sent them back into my dearest so-and-so. And every time they would pass the letters because the men were separated on one side of the camp and the women on the other side of the camp. And, and, and they, basically they were saying that it was the love letters that sustained them from giving up. Mm. The hope that they were going to see yeah. that one yeah. that they loved again. And they began to read. There's a book out. It's a Dutch couple. And the book was uh, printed based on the letters they wrote back and forth. Uh, and they had them passed back and forth. And what are you saying? The thing is, is that this will sustain us Amen. if we'll realize it's from our lover. Hallelujah. Amen. That God wants to see us through. And that God is there every step of the way. And that he'll keep us. Amen. And he'll be there with us if we will dig in and get into the word of God. Amen. The word of God is food for the soul. And Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3 says, And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Job said in verse chapter 23, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. 
I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. In Psalm 119, how sweet are the words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than the honey to my mouth. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and the word was unto me the joy and rejoicing.